Okay, in this tutorial, I want to talk about a rigging situation that I came across that kind of stumped me for a little while dealing with the eyelashes. Now, there are a number of tutorials about rigging eyelashes that involve blend shapes, and I've actually recorded some of those myself, and they're pretty straightforward. It's where if your eyes are being controlled uh, via blend shapes to open and close, you can create your eyelashes um, at the various different points along the journey of the eyelash closing, maybe one where it's open, one where it's mid-closed, one where it's fully closed. You can sculpt those eyelashes to then fit the position of the eyelid along its journey. And if it's done correctly, the eyelashes will appear to follow the eyelid. Um, that's all well and good, but what happens if you have a situation like mine where you have a more complex rig where it's not only being controlled by blend shapes, but also by these on-face controls that are skin weight painted uh, to the mesh itself so that I can create, uh, have more overall control over the shape of my eyelid. Now, a blend shape uh, eyelash is not going to conform to the changes that are happening here with my skin weights. And therefore, that's not the kind of solution that I can rely on. And it took me a while to figure out exactly how to implement this, but I'm going to try to uh, explain this as clearly as possible. I'm not going to go through and do all the steps. It's going to be more of an explanation video. Um, I figure if you're at this level, you can probably figure out how to fill in the gaps. I hope so, at least. Um, so the first step to this is to figure out, well, what are the eyelashes going to grow on? Um, I don't want them to grow on the entirety of the face, so I want to really limit it. Um, this kind of depends on which uh, hair solution you're using, or if you're not using hair, what kind of geometry solution you're using. Um, I tried both Ornatrix and Xgen. In the end, I ended up using Xgen, to my own surprise, um, but it worked. And uh, so I generated the, the mesh of the eyelashes using Xgen. Um, now, the eyelashes themselves, I can show you what they kind of look like when they are put into the finished version. Let me just reset this here. All right. This is what I made. All right, and I'll turn off these other controls so they're a little bit easier to see. Now, the, um, the eyelashes themselves, what did they grow on? Well, um, this one might not surprise you so much. I had to create some custom geometry. The geometry itself needed to follow the eyelids, um, and then I specifically looked at where the eyelashes grow from. So I created these growth planes. What I did was I went in um, using my quad draw tool, uh, which basically allows me to sort of retopologize my mesh, make the mesh alive, use quad draw, um, and then I created, if we can just select that again, eyelash growth plane. Um, I did it at reasonably small geometry, so let me just turn off uh, the rest of the face there. Um, so these are decently, you know, they're, they're not very big polygons, and I needed them to be small enough so that they overall captured the curvature of the eyelids. Uh, they don't need to be, you know, terribly tiny, but they need to be small enough. And I did that for... Uh, each of the eyelids separately. So what do I do about that? Well, in order for these now to follow the actual eyelid, they have to be wrapped to the eyelid itself. So if I turn the body back on, what I mean by that is I use a wrap deformer between uh, the eyelash, gro eyelash growth planes and the rest of the mesh. To make this as straightforward as possible and to limit the number of um, uh, uh, deformers that are on my mesh, I made sure that these eyelash growth planes were all just a single piece of geometry. So I, they're just polygon objects. I just used mesh combine to turn them all into a single piece of geometry. And therefore only one wire, sorry, only one wrap deformer is required. And uh, if I were to use my controls here to adjust things, um, if I move this up or down, you probably can't see it in real time, but if I move it up or down and I select my growth planes again, you can see that that's following along and it will do it for 
uh, both the upper and lower eyelids. All right, so that's a relatively straightforward part. And that's probably what's the easiest thing to figure out. And from that eyelash growth plane, that's what I grow the uh, eyelashes using X-Gen or Ornatrix or, or what have you. Uh, I grow them from that. Okay, then uh, I grow them from that, but they don't actually attach to that mesh. And that's kind of the problem because I can make this wonderful geometry for the eyelashes and it will fit along the eyelids, but it's not going to follow automatically these growth planes. And that's kind of the next tricky bit. How do I get that to work? So in order to make that work, um, I, I was thinking, should I try to create a wrap deformer between the eyelashes and the growth plane? And I tried that and I didn't like the results. And I also don't like the idea of having to add on multiple wrap deformers because they're rather expensive to calculate. The solution I came up with uh, is a bit different. So in order to um, get these to follow, the eyelashes to follow the growth plane uh, in, a, in a very uh, efficient way, I decided that it would be better if they could actually be skin weight painted to some joints. Now, uh, the joints themselves are uh, that, that, you know, how do you create the joints so that they actually work functionally in this context? Um, the joints, I don't want to have uh, connected to the other joints in my rig. These ones I want to sort of stand alone um, and to follow uh, my my overall um, uh, basically just follow the eyelid of the eyelash growth plane. Okay, so in order for that to happen, the joints need to sit directly on the eyelash growth plane. What's a good way to do this? Well, again, let me turn off the visibility of the mesh, and I'll turn off the eyes as well. So, kind of a straightforward way to do this is to go in and say, I want the joints to sit at the center of each one of these polygons. And if you go in and you grab the four vertices of any polygon and you create a uh, cluster, that cluster will sit at the center of those four points. And the great thing about a cluster is that it is an object that you can um, uh, point snap to, or, or basically if you create a joint, you can snap it to the location of that cluster. So I did this for every one of these faces. All right, I created these clusters. These clusters were only temporary objects and they really only existed for the sake of being able to place these joints. So what I did was I created um, a bunch of joints and they don't even have to be connected to each other, although they can be. Uh, actually, it's probably just easiest to count the number of polygons that you have up here, uh, then go through and create a number of joints in a row um, probably from, I don't know, a front view or something like that. Um, as you can see here, I have, these are all the different joints that I had created. They aren't actually connected to each other. Um, but if you were to, if they were to be connected, it wouldn't really matter. Um, and then you just grab one of them, hold down V, point snap it to the location of the cluster, and do that for each of the subsequent joints. And that way those clusters become quite useful once you're done with doing that, once all the joints are in place, you can just go in and grab the clusters and delete them. They're no longer necessary. So I will uh, turn on my joints here so we can better see them real quick. Show joints. All right, so those are the joints that I added to each of the locations of the center point of those polygons. Okay, so still, how do I get them to follow the eyelash growth planes. Um, what I decided to do with this was to say, well, one thing that I know will follow the eyelash growth planes are follicles, hair follicles. And uh, if I go in to my FX menu, let me turn off um, my joints real quick. And let's just say that I grab all the faces, or I'll just grab the faces of the top plane, for instance. And I go to uh, N hair, 
and create hair options. All right, so output um, nerves curves. We'll do it at the selected points slash faces. That's the important part of this. And we don't have to worry much about the hair itself. We can keep that down to like, you know, two points per hair and a very short length. Something like just point 0.1 or something like that. And hit apply. And what that does is it creates these follicles, these hairs essentially, at all of these locations at each one of these joints. So what to do about that. Those are my output curves. And I just needed to make sure that I have these enabled, um, the visibility of them enabled because uh, they were added to a group that was currently hidden. So I could see the hairs, but I couldn't actually see the follicles themselves. So that's that's fine. That's on now. Uh, so each of these counts as a, as a follicle. And fortunately, follicles are objects that I can constrain things to. So what I want to do is I want to create a parent constraint between each of the joints and each of the follicles so that the joints are constrained to the follicle itself. Um, and this way here, actually having the joints where they are not connected to each other, not parented to each other, is probably a little bit easier. I don't know, I don't know if it would make a difference in the end or not, but um, all I need to do is to say, here, I'm going to grab my, uh, my follicle, if I can select it, grab my joint, and just go up to rigging constraint, parent, and uh, make sure that basically my default options are on. Think, edit, reset settings, yep. Apply, and that way the joint will now follow that follicle. I'm gonna undo that because I don't need that joint to follow this follicle anymore because I already have it set up in my scene. So I do that for every one of them. And then as a result, let me get rid of these new follicles that I made and so I can uh, show you the original ones that I had. All right. Um, don't need these output curves here. All right. So then, after having done that, I can now activate my controls. Grab this guy rotate and you'll see that the joints follow along with my mesh and that's exactly what I want to have happen so what's the final step here well effectively it's just a matter of taking your eyelashes and taking each one of your joints all right so I just I would grab all the joints of just the upper eyelash here or the upper eyelid um, so all these joints here, and then grab my mesh for that, for those eyelashes, right? At this point here, it's probably worth it to point out before I continue on that um, the eyelashes are in four separate, uh, not groups, but they're four separate pieces of geometry. They will, depending on how you make them, they'll probably all come out as a single, each eyelash is a single piece of geometry. I just grabbed the upper group here and combined it uh, using modeling mesh combine. And I did that for that one, I did it for that one, and I did it for that one. So we just have four different pieces of geometry here. So we grab all of the joints here, we grab that particular eyelash, and then we can just go into our standard skinning, bind skin, right? We'll bind to, in this case, the selected joints. Um, these ones don't actually even have a joint hierarchy, so and selected joints in this case is just going to be a little bit safer. Um, based on probably closest distance is fine, classic linear is fine, max influences I'd probably take that down to about three, and uh, everything else would be fine. I just hit apply, and that would go through, and that skins them, and it does a pretty darn good job. Um, I haven't actually had to adjust the skin painting here, um, I don't think. And um, as a result, they just work. And that's the beautiful thing about it, is that um, it's a process that, once you know what you're doing, doesn't actually take that long, but figuring it out certainly did. And um, there are a few things that I still need to tweak, which is making sure that these 
um, sort of rotate a little bit more when they come down to the base because um, they they don't entirely exactly fit precisely the way eyelashes work. And that's another thing. I might actually add a little bit of blend shape control on top of these, but that would be on top of the existing movement that's being generated by the system that I set up. So I'm gonna worry about that later on in my process. Uh, but for now, that's my overview of how to set something like this up so that you can get eyelashes that work with both blend shape controls and skin weighting. Uh, so you have this nice combination rig with the eyelashes that follow just for the sake of example here, because I don't think I even demonstrated this, right? I move this up, the eyelashes follow. So if I had some kind of weird face thing going on, right? I could get them to follow, which is really useful. All right. Hope that's been of help to you all and good luck.